In this resin tutorial today, I'm going to be doing a Black Sand Beach inspired piece. This has been on my list to do for quite a while. And then I also got a request to do a resin waves piece, but combining texture paste together. So I thought this would be the perfect tutorial to do both. To start with, I'm using a wooden artist board that I have already painted black with some acrylic paint. If you don't have a wooden artist board, you could always use a stretch canvas. But the reason why I am using a wooden board is because I'm going to be applying texture paste and resin. And so this is going to stay nice and level throughout the process. Even if the texture paste and resin gets quite heavy, it's not going to sag in the middle, which sometimes stretch canvases can do. So I've already just primed that and painted it black with some acrylic paint. Uh, nothing special there. And then with my texture paste, I have added a little bit of that same black uh, acrylic paint into my texture paste mixture. And I will add a link up above to um, how to make your own texture paste mixture. So you can definitely go and watch that if you haven't seen that tutorial already. And then I'm just applying that to the bottom of my board. And this is gonna start creating the sort of sand area of my beach. I'm applying this quite thick as I will sand back a little bit to get it nice and smooth and also because I'm going to be doing multiple layers of resin I want my uh, sand area to still be high enough that the resin won't pour over and start to cover that sand area so I did do it quite thick and it did take about 24 hours for it to fully dry and set before I could go on to the next step. I also decided I wanted to add a little bit of texture underneath the resin because you will be able to see a little bit coming through so I applied that to the end of my board and I did it really randomly and scraped it down because I didn't want it to be too thick on top of that I also sprinkled down some of my black sand or what I'm going to be calling black sand it's technically called vase decor I found it on Amazon and I thought it would work really well for this tutorial so I sprinkled that all over the top because I wanted it to be a bit uh, glittery coming up through my layers of resin. I also did put a little bit of this over the top of the texture paste but then I also remembered that I would be sanding back that thick area of texture paste and it wasn't really needed to put over the top at that time so you can skip that step because you will be sanding it back and now once this had fully dried so this did take a good 24 hours for it to completely dry before I was able to sand it just because it was so thick and the weather was really wet and rainy so it slowed the texture paste down from setting and I started off with a I think this was 80 grit and then I switched the 80 grit to a 200 grit. When I did apply the texture paste, I did do it really rough because I still want some texture in this. I don't want to sand it down completely flat, but I just want it to have some really sort of smooth parts and some more rougher parts with this piece. And then when I was happy with how it was looking, I just used a clean brush to get into all of the little nooks and crannies and get all of that extra sort of sand powder all all of that out before I then went back over the top with some black acrylic paint. Now I did originally mix acrylic paint in with the texture paste but it wasn't the as black as I wanted it because obviously the texture paste made it a bit lighter so then I decided to go back in and repaint it just with acrylic paint. And then once the acrylic paint had dried, I could then start on my first layer of resin. So I've mixed up some resin and the resin that I am using today is from uh, AD Coatings, I believe that's what they're called. And it is their art resin. And I've mixed that up and I'm gonna be adding some black translucent pigment. So the black translucent pigment I'm using is a black tint from Barnes and I've added just a few drops because I want my first layer to still be translucent. I wanna still see the sparkles and that texture from under the resin, but I also do want it to be a little bit deeper and darker. Then I've also added some of this sparkle pigment powder, just a really tiny bit. I don't want it to be overly shiny and sparkly, but I just want it to have a nice little reflect through it. 
and then I'm applying that completely over the surface area where I don't have that thick layer of textured paste. So this is going to be where I do my resin waves and I'm spreading that out and once I fully spread that out over my board I'm then just going to be using my blowtorch to pop any bubbles that I have in the resin and I'm going to let this completely set before I do the next layer of resin. The reason why I'm not doing waves in this first layer is because of that texture I feel like it's going to interfere when I do blow the white pigment across to create the waves because it is so bumpy. So that's why I did one layer of my resin, let that completely set and then I'm going back in to do a second layer of resin and this layer is the layer that I'm going to do my waves. So once again I'm spreading that out over the surface area of where I want the waves to be, going back in with my blowtorch just to pop any bubbles. I also like to heat up the resin just slightly before I do try to do my wave effect because I do find if the resin is a little bit more fluid which is what the heat does the waves blow across the surface area a lot smoother. Small cup I've got a little bit of resin which I've also mixed in some titanium white pigment from Just Resin. When you do waves it's best to get a titanium white pigment if you want to get a really good effect and I've mixed that through and then I'm doing that along the shoreline. Now the thicker you make your white line the more you're going to have to blow it back to get big waves. The thinner you make it the less you have to blow it so if you want to have waves that go you know quite far down your board do your pigment thicker then if you want to say if you're doing a smaller item like a coaster you would want to do a really thin line of your white so that way you don't have to blow it back as much. I also just went back in with my blowtorch across the white resin just to heat that up to make it flow a bit better. Now this is in real time. So this is the time I take to go completely across my board. You can see I'm not rushing it and I always just do one pass. I never go back in. I find if I go back in I will ruin my cells and lacing pattern. So slow and steady and it's also helpful if you put your blow um, your heat gun on an angle. You could also use a hairdryer for this part as well and that will then blow that white resin across the clear resin which then creates this really cool cells and lacing pattern. I do sometimes like to go back in with a little bit of white just along the border of my wave to thicken it up in certain areas if I've blown it back a little bit too much. Then I've let that completely set before I'm going to do my next layer of resin. Now the reason why I don't do both of my waves in one layer is because I find it's really hard to get two clean lots of waves because normally when you go to do the second one and you go back in to blow it you then end up ruining the first line of waves so it's a lot easier if you let it set and then go back in. Now I'm going back in and I'm doing all the exact same steps as I did previously on my first layer of waves and you can do this as close to the shoreline as you want or you can do it a little bit further back. Now for this particular one I kind of wanted the waves to be quite overlapping so I only went a little bit back from the original wave but if you don't like that sort of style and you want it to be a bit more defined between the two different lines of your waves then just place your white a bit further down. Then I'm going back in with my blowtorch and my heat gun just to create that sort of effect and for this one because I wanted that wave to stretch a little bit more I just ever so slightly picked up my board and let it tilt just to stretch out that wave. Now you do have to be really careful with this because once again if you do overwork it you can sometimes instead of expanding the cells out and getting more you can end up expanding them out too much and they disappear and you lose the definition. So it's a very fine line with creating your resin waves with not overworking them. This next part I'm mixing some gold pigment so this one is my favorite pale gold from Barnes with some gold leafing glue. Uh, this is going to be one of my new found favorite ways of applying gold borders. It's so incredibly easy to do 
I'm applying that along the textured border where the texture paste meets the resin. I saw this from an artist on Instagram. She did a really similar artwork and she added a gold border going across and I thought that looked really beautiful but I haven't been able to find her again. So if you know the artist that I am talking about, please let me know her name so I can then add a credit towards this part because it was inspired by her piece. I thought the gold going along where the shoreline, the textured paste and the resin meets is so beautiful and just adds a really cool element and kind of helps really tie this piece together. For this next step, please leave your opinion on it in the comments. I was really happy with how it was looking right here with the sort of acrylic paint with the matte sort of textured paste that meets the really glossy resin waves. But I originally did have planned to add this, the black sand, the vase deco over the top of the textured paste. So I don't know whether I should have just left it as it is like this with the matte and the shine or whether adding on the black sand has finished the piece. So let me know what your thoughts are, if I should have left it, or if you like the extra texture on top of the texture paste. The reason why I'm saying this is because I'm using a glue to obviously apply all of that black sand over it, and I've applied it over the entire surface area of the texture paste and then just sprinkled over the top areas in sort of random spots that extra black sand to just give it a bit more texture. But because I did apply the glue over the entire surface area, it then gave it more of a satin finish than necessarily a matte finish to this look. And I kind of want to know, should I have left it as a matte finish or do you like the sort of a bit more of that shine and the black sand added on top? And this is how the piece looked when I finished adding the extra texture to it. So let me know what your thoughts are on that. And if you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you are new to my channel, please do subscribe as I post new videos all the time. And I have a whole playlist of different resin art videos you can go and check out. Thank you so much for watching.